Okay. So here are my saws, bars, chains, got a sprocket up here. It's quiet time, so I can try and explain things. But guess what? I don't even know where to fucking start. I guess I'll start, these are chainsaws. Lots of you that are doing the Dremel carvings see that I'm getting into chainsaw, well I'm not getting into, I'm doing chainsaw carvings and you're trying to get into it yourself. And trust me, I know, for all of you that don't know me, I got a brain injury, okay? It's a TBI, it's called a traumatic brain injury, okay? So I get confused as hell with numbers. And when you're dealing with different chains, Different sprockets, sp sprockets, different bars, different saws, different makes of saws, echo, still. Different bar, different bar, different chain, different chain. There's so many freaking variables. It confuses the hell out of me. I've been doing it for five years now. That's not very long, but... It still confuses the hell out of me. I'm just starting to get it now. So what I'm going to do in this video is explain the simplest I can. And I want to say something at the very beginning of this video too. For the real pros with chainsaws, if I say something that's incorrect, like Steve Kenzora, I trust Steve's judgment. Like my buddy Chris, Chris Garage. I trust his judgment. He's been a tree follower for 25, 30 years. So he knows saws, he knows bars, chains, and he knows different sprockets. This video is just going to be basically sprockets, bars, and chains. It's not going to be any of the maintenance. You can hear in my voice, I'm already getting frustrated because it gets very tricky to explain. So I'm basically going to explain this pretend. Let's just pretend we all have brain injuries, then maybe you might be able to understand what I'm saying. Okay, let's start off with this saw here, okay? This is an arborist saw, right? This is a still 193. This is the second to smallest still that they make, I believe. I think the 150 is the smallest. But this saw here is normally a top handle saw. So normally the handle would be right here and you would have like a trigger and your gas would be up here. But I think this is, yeah, it's the 193C. So this has the rear handle, okay? I don't, I'm not going to get into the RPMs and stuff like that, what it is. But so when I first started carving, basically when you, if you first want to start carving, and I'm going to use Steve as a reference, and sorry Steve if I say something that's wrong, you're please more than welcome to correct me in the comments. Because you guys, I ask Steve lots of questions. I, I like to ask Ryan, but Ryan doesn't have the time because he's just busy carving and he's busy with his family. And like we're talking about Ryan Cook and, uh, He's busy with his family and stuff like that. Like, so I don't want to bother him too much. So basically, if you want to start chainsaw carving, I suggest, I don't have it up here. I have three of them. I suggest you buy yourself a still MS 170. This is a 193, but buy the 170. It's a cheap throwaway saw. It's a homeowner saw, but trust me, it's a good saw. I think they're on sale right now in Canada for $207 before taxes. You know, if it burns out every year to throw it away, buy another one. Okay. That's what I suggest. And I think that's what Steve would suggest too. Steve's a totally, total professional chainsaw carving and he's been doing it forever. Steve suggests, and he's told me he suggests for the very beginning carvers is the 172 because Buy a cheap saw. See if it likes you guys. Chainsaw carving's not easy work if you do it full scale. Let's, but just let's save that for another video. So let's just pretend this 193 is a 170, okay? This 193, okay, came with a normal bar, just like this. This is it's this is a bigger bar, okay? But pretend this is a normal bar. You see how round it is on the end? And watch this thing when I spin it. It has a spinning sprocket in there, okay? That's a normal bar. It comes with a 3 8 gauge sprocket, okay? Most carving bars, 
this is a cannon bar. The tips melted on it. I'll explain why that happened later. This is a cannon bar. I think it's a 14 inch. Most carving bars, I think all carving bars, but don't hold me to that, come with a quarter inch pitch chain. Okay. You can see in this carving bar, there is no sprocket in here. Nothing spinning. So this tip on this bar is heated up. You can see it. See that where it's white on the outside there? It's, it's whatever. It's heated special steel on the end, okay? Because there's no spinning sprocket. Look at the size. I think this is a dime tip. Look at the size difference. Don't get me wrong. This is a big, this is a normal bar. This is a carving bar. See how it spins? You guys, I know I'm speaking like I'm talking to a two-year-old because I'm basically sp speaking, I'm talking out loud, so I'm talking to myself to try and explain to myself so it makes sense. Normal bar, carving bar, okay? So most, so I don't get confused, most carving bars are quarter inch, quarter inch pitch chain, or it will say 0 0.250, okay? Quarter inch pitch chain is smaller than three eighths pitch chain okay so here is i write on my i write on my sprockets this is a two oh this is for my 201 ms okay this sprocket i wrote on it so i know it's a quarter pitch sprocket if you can read quarter inch that's what that's supposed to be okay so what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to put my camera on the overhead and i'm going to try and put a three eighths pitch chain on this sprocket and show you guys how it doesn't fit then I'll show you how the quarter inch pitch chain fits. So just remember guys, when you're using a carve, carving bar, it's quarter pitch chain. So you need a quarter pitch sprocket, not a three eighths sprocket, okay? And it comes with 50 gauge or, four, or, or 43, like 0 .50, 0 .050 or 0 .043, but we we'll, won't talk about that yet. We'll talk about that in a bit so we don't get ahead of ourselves. I'll put my camera in the overhead and I'll show you how the 3 8 pitch chain does not fit on this. Okay, so what I basically do is I tape, I tape my chain to my bar. So when I want to put this bar on my saw, well, hey, I know this is the chain for it, right? It's it's That's kind of dummy proof. Some The pros are going to be laughing at me, but I really don't care. So when you got your bar, you, have, you always have a stamp here, okay? to say all your specifics of the bar and the chain and the pitch, okay? So it's always a good idea, thank you, Chris, it's always a good idea to take a picture of this when your bar is brand new because after a while, your bars wear out, and sometimes this wears out, and you, if, you're, if you're not a pro, you don't know what chain's going to fit on this bar. So this bar, can you guys read that? Let's see here. I got to stand up, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so this bar... Right there is, what does it say, 20 inch? That's a 20 inch bar. Sorry guys, I'm having a hard time reading. It's a 20 inch bar. It's a 3 8, eight pitch chain, 3 8 pitch chain, and it's 50 gauge, okay? The bar bar's length, it's a normal bar, 20 inches. Does that say 20? Yeah, it's 20 inches. It's 3 8 pitch chain, and it's 50 gauge, okay? Boom. So I know when I want to put this bar on my saw, boom, this chain goes with it. I tape them together. Dummy proof. Hey, when it comes to chainsaws, chains, and sprockets, I don't care. When I say dummy proof, I'm speaking for myself. I could be the biggest dummy when it comes to it. I don't know. I really don't give a shit. Okay? So even for example, here's this chain. I got it taped up because... Well, you get, after you get so many, I got like 13 chainsaws, okay? So after you get so many different saws, bars, sprockets, chains, I just tape it up. Or you get yourself a little Rubbermaid and put the chains for that size in each Rubbermaid so you know what's what so you don't get confused. For dummies, right? So this is for my 12-inch steel carving bar. 12-inch steel carving bar. It's a quarter pitch, 50 gauge. So I got this taped up so I know exactly... This is a 12 inch carving bar. It's quarter pitch, it's 50 gauge. So it's taped up so I know this goes on here, okay? Simple as that. Okay, so this tape was supposed to be on here but it came off. This is a four, this goes on a 14 inch bar. It's 3 8 gauge, sorry, it's 3 8 pitch, 50 gauge chain, okay? So this chain is 3 8 
chain. I know this chain will not go on a carving bar. If you think it does, you're mistaken. Okay? It might fit nice around there. You might think it fits nice and tug around that, nice and tight around that tip. See? But it's not the correct one. Okay? It's not correct. I had a steel company, without me knowing, put, I asked them for quarter pitch chain. I asked them to, to buy quarter inch 50 gauge chain for my saws. They put this uh, this chain on my saw with the carving bar. I wasn't aware that it was 3 8 I used it, and not this bar, but another bar. It heated my tip. It fried my sprocket. It fried everything, my sprocket and the tip on my bar. So make sure for your carving bar, it's 40, it's um, quarter pitch or 250. 250 of the thousands quarter, right? So, so this is, once again, this is my sprocket. It's off a of 201. I don't know if this sprocket will fit on my 193. I don't know if it will fit on my 170. It might, it might not. I don't know. So I just wrote 201 on it just to be safe for when I want to change my sprocket on my 201. Because right now it has a 3 8 sprocket. When I want to put a carving bar back on this saw, which I don't think I will because that's a different matter, I'll put this sprocket on there and it's good for a carving bar. It's just good to mark all your stuff if you're not a pro and you're not good with numbers. So this is a quarter pinch sprocket. Let's put this 3 8 chain on here. See if we can get some better lighting here. Okay. I got to stand to do this. So you see, it does not fit in there. Look at these drive links on the bottom. I don't know if they're called drive links or whatever there, but these things, okay? Look at these. These should fit nice and tightly around there, but they do not because it's a quarter pitch sprocket, and this is a 3 8 it's a quarter pitch sprocket, and this is a 3 8 pitch chain, okay? But again, I showed you it fits nice and nice and even around the bar tip, right? Spins nice, doesn't it? Sure does. Trust me. So we know that this chain is no good. Okay. Now here's a proper quarter pitch chain. Okay. Now let's put this chain in the sprocket. Look at that. Look how nicely it fits in there. You see. Uh, sorry, guys, it's not zooming in. You see how it's fitting? Each one of these things fit inside those stars. They're zoomed in there. See how it's fit nice and snug in there? Boom. Quarter inch sprocket, quarter inch pitch chain. Perfect fit. This is a quarter inch bar. And this is quarter inch pitch chain. So let's put this in here. And boom, look at that perfect. There is your 100% perfect fit. So you know, you know your quarter inch pitch chain, fit your quarter inch pitch bar, and fit your quarter inch pitch sprocket when it's on the thing. So you're good to go. Now, there's one other variable. Okay, I got to think of the name because, well, I'm a dummy. So here's your chain. Here's your cutters here, right? This is your cutter. This is your raker, okay? When these rakers have two things there, like a, there would be a rake, raker on this link and a rake, raker on this leaf, that would be a safety chain. I don't like using safety chains. If you want to use a safety chain, go for it, okay? But that's a whole different matter. So now we're talking about the gauge on a chain because quarter pitch or three eighths, you can get 50 gauge or I think the most common are 50 gauge. And so it would be 0 0.050 or 0.050. 043. So you get 50 gauge or 43 gauge. Okay. Now the gauge on the chain, see these drivers or whatever they're called, these bottom, right? Your cutters, you cut the chains. Okay, let's do this. So here's your drivers on whatever they're called on the bottom. This is the top of your chain. Here's the cutter, top, raker, cutter, raker. But these things down here, your drivers, I think they are. The gauge is how thick. See between my finger and thumb? That's how thick they are. So if you have 43 gauge, it's thinner than 50 gauge, okay? So carving bars do come in 
43 gauge or 50, 50 gauge, okay? So if you get a carving bar with 43 gauge, like 0.043, this inside of the bar, this where my fingernail's running, right where the tip of the pencil's going, this would be thinner because the gauge on your chain would be thinner. This thing right here, if you flip it straight up and down, in between my fingers would be thinner. A 50 gauge would be thicker, okay? So carving bars do have 43 gauge or 50 gauge. So 43 would be thinner, th 50 gauge would be thicker. I know I repeat myself. But if you have a quarter inch sprocket, okay, it doesn't matter if you put 0.43 or 0.50 gauge on the sprocket. This quarter inch sprocket will take either or 43 gauge or 50 gauge. Okay. So when it comes to the gauge of the chain, which is these bottom things, right? These bottom things that fit inside the bar. When it comes to the gauge, just make sure you get the right chain. For the, see, this is. This, this is a bigger chain. I think this is even bigger than uh, the gauge is even bigger than uh, 0 0.50. Make sure you get the chain. That, so let me stop, press pause, and start over again so I'm not a freaking weirdo. Make sure if your chain says 50 gauge, your bar, your bar is 50 gauge too. If your chain says 43 gauge, make sure your bar is 43 gauge too. Does that make sense? Do not worry about the sprocket if it takes 53 gauge or 40 gauge. It takes both. Okay. Okay, so here's what my 193. So pretend this is a 170. So what I think you should do, I don't know if you're a, his, a husky carver or a steel carver or an echo carver, okay? Like what chainsaw you prefer, hus steel, husky, or, or echo, whatever you want. But it's best to go to your steel shop, go to your steel dealer, buy a 170 or 193, this is a light saw, or 193, go to your steel dealer and say, I need to get a steel carving bar on my new saw, and I need it to have the quarter pitch sprocket, because these carving bars are quarter pitch, okay? So look. This is a steel carving bar. Sorry, guys, I'm not trying to insult anybody or I'm just talking out loud and it's frustrating for me doing this. Get me going about Dremels. That's a different story. So this is a 12-inch bar. It's quarter pitch, 50 gauge, right? Um, driver links. Um, well, how many driver links would be in there? Um, 64, I believe. Okay. So that's your driver links. So it's just best to go to your steel shop or your husky shop and say, listen, I want the still one. I suggest this saw for the very beginners, somebody that wants to try it. I want the still 170 with a still dime tip carving bar on it because these, that's, it's just as simple as that. I want the 170 with the still dime tip carving bar on it. And I want the new sprocket for the carving bar. It's as simple as that. Okay, I'll start over again. Let's pretend we walk into the store and this is the, this is, this saw is a person that, that works at the still shop. He's behind the counter. This is, this pencil's you. Hi, sir. I'd like to buy the steel 170 with the steel carving bar. Yeah, but um, the steel carving bars are on back order. That's okay. I'll still order it. And I'd like to order the quarter pitch sprocket for it too. Okay, well, like I said, the steel bars are on back order. It doesn't matter. Please order me the quarter pitch sprocket because the 170s come with the 3 8 sprocket. So you need to switch the sprocket out. They're like 40 bucks or something. Does that make sense? Okay, okay. Now, all carvers, this chain's pretty good. Some carvers have their chain lower. You keep this chain loose like this because there's no sprocket in this bar. So you need to keep this chain loose because you got to think when this saw is running, this chain tightens up, okay? So when this, if this chain tightens up too much, you're either going to melt your tip away or you're just gonna, it's just going to blow apart like this. This tip, it's still, I saved it a bit. Pete helped me with it. We filed it down a bit, okay? 
But what happened was, I'll explain what happened with this. Here I go into hyper spaz, Jordy. So this is on my steel. This is a professional saw. This saw is like a $900 saw. This is an arborist saw. It's a 201, okay? This saw is a friggin' beast. Even Steve Kanzora said for the size, it's a beast. But what I did, <clears throat> I'm not going to say who suggested it, but it's it's my own thing because, well, I gave it a muffler mod, right? So you drill a hole in the muffler. Don't pay attention to me. Don't do it, guys. Whatever you want to do. And it gives your saw more power, okay? So anyways, I did the muffler mod on this saw, which I wanted to, and I'm still glad I did because this thing is a friggin' nightmare, this saw. But I, I kept on melting bars with this saw, okay? I kept on melting bars and blowing out bars and breaking bars and wrecking them. I'm like, fuck, frick, I can't think. Why am I doing it? I asked Steve about it, this and that, and I showed him videos. Let me get this case off here, and I'll be back. Yeah, I know it hasn't been cleaned out. I haven't had time to do it, but um, I'll do it tomorrow. But anyways... With the muffler modded, I put a, here's your clutch, okay? This is a clutch and your sprockets behind the clutch, okay? See? There's, your, let's see if we can get some good lighting in here. I don't want to get too in-depth because I don't want to confuse people, but there's your, there's your sprocket. Where's that sprocket I had? Yeah, here we go, Spaz Jordy. So they pretend this, this is the Zach 1, but it's quarter pitch, right? It's three-eighths in there right now. It's hard to see with the lighting. So this would be for a normal bar. But this saw, so what I did is I bought a brand new sprocket, a brand new chain, and this brand new bar, Canon, the best in the business in my opinion, and I'm sure many others. I bought a brand new bar, brand new sprocket, brand new chain. I kept my chain nice and loose, probably loose like this. That's a little bit too loose. I got told if you leave your chains too loose, you can screw up your sprocket too because it, well, it's too loose and it doesn't ride. It, the chain will come out of the sprocket and you'll get little dents and dings in there and your sprocket will be junk. The bottom line is this saw had too much power for this bar. Steve Kenzora even suggested that I switch over to, because I usually use a canola, canola oil. Lots of carvers do it. Steve suggested that I switch over to proper chainsaw bar oil right because you know you need the, the oil on your bars so i went to steel and i bought the most expensive best stuff but it's still heated up this tip steve told me i value steve's um like he lets me ask him questions and i value it thank you so much steve steve told me if you're carving for a few minutes put turn your saw off put your fingers on your bar like this if it's too hot to the touch or burns your fingers you're probably not doing something right. Something's wrong. Because if you get these too hot, you're going to wreck them. This isn't cheap. This is like a $130, $40 bar. Okay? So, I tried. This saw just runs too fast for this freaking carving bar. I'm going to either need a bigger carving bar with a loony tip or a toony tip. It's just, it's just, it's a freaking killer, this sucker. It's crazy. Or I might have to put a normal muffler back on it, just the stock one, and just slow it down a bit. But anyways, is there anything else I need to talk about? The real pros that have been using sauce forever, I value your comments below this video. If you're not, a, if you haven't been using chainsaws for like 15 or 20 years, and you only think you know what you're talking about, Please don't bother leaving a comment because I'll probably delete it on this video without being rude. I love you all so much. So much. Please be good to me tomorrow. I love you so much, you little sexy bitch. You just rip through that wood like there is no tomorrow. See? This saw. This is an 8 inch cannon bar. 50 gauge. Quarter pitch. Full chisel. These saws in the UK. My buddy Brian Moore has got like 20 of them. They, you can buy them. 
these saws. This is the Echo 2511, people. You can buy these saws that have the quarter pitch sprocket in them from the factory or 3 8 Well, here in Canada, they only come with 3 8 sprockets. So I couldn't get a quarter pitch sprocket. It was back ordered. So my good buddy Brian from the UK, England, got me two quarter pitch sprockets and sent them to me all the way from England. Okay? Guys, I hope this helped you. I know it gets confusing. And electric saws, say if you're going to go buy, if you want to just start small and you want to go try like a Roby, like R-O-B-I or a Roby saw, okay? An electric one or a battery saw. Make sure you do your research if you want to put a carving bar on that saw, okay? Make sure you do your research that you are able, if it does, if it comes with a 3 8 pitch sprocket, just look on the bar when you go to the shop to buy it. Look on the bar. It should say on the bar the numbers. If it says 3 8 on it, make sure you are able to get a quarter pitch sprocket for that saw if you want to put a carving bar on it, okay? Because if you cannot put a quarter pitch sprocket on that saw, then you're not going to be able to, to put a carving bar on that saw. So it will just be your block out saw. But so I better stop this video right now because I'm a freaking dummy when it comes to this stuff. I hope this somehow, there's so many more videos you make about maintenance, cleaning out all this goopy crap. But I'll tell you one thing right now, I'm going to, when I'm, when I'm using like a bigger bar, like where's that bigger bar that I had? When I'm using a bigger bar like this now, I'm not using corn, corn holy oil anymore. Okay. I'm using proper chainsaw bar oil. Steve gets it for like 10 bucks a gallon out in Ontario though. But like I paid like $2,000 for a gallon of it here at Steel. But anyways, message Steve, guys. He loves answering questions. Professional chainsaw carver, super nice guy. Doesn't like people, but he loves, he's like me. I hey, believe it or not, believe me, I don't like people either. But all you guys talking about the saws and my subs are my friends. And I hope you guys just be safe too. There's a whole bunch of different things. My buddy Chris Garage just started his YouTube channel. He's been using saws for like 25 plus years. He's an arborist. He's got uh, saws with this little cannon bar. And he's the one that told me to do the muff mod on the two, this 201. So it's his fault. But just kidding. But he did show me how to do it. But anyways, he has a video up on chainsaws, on sprockets and some bar maintenance. I'm going to ask him to make some more videos. I'd love it if Steve Kanzora made some videos, but Steve's just busy with his family and uh, carving because that's how he makes a living. You know, maybe one day Steve might even, he was mentioning he might even have like a chainsaw seminar, chainsaw boot camp out there in Ontario. Wouldn't that be a blast? But uh, that might be for it down the road. But anyways, um, yeah, just message Steve with all your questions because I don't know the right answers. He's uh, He does. I'm sorry I said that, Steve, but I probably wouldn't message Steve with all your questions. But you guys, we have a chainsaw carving group on Facebook. It's called uh, Chainsaw Carving of Fusion. Yeah, Chainsaw Carving of Fusion. Steve's, I don't really answer questions on there because I think if I do, Steve's going to yell at me because I was wrong because I don't know the real thing. So I just kind of let Steve, um, it's basically Steve's group and I let him uh, answer the questions because like I said, I'm always wrong. I'm a Dremel carver. Ask me questions about Dremel. I'll school you on that. But when it comes to chainsaw, numbers, shit, fuck, damn, hell. See you later. Love you guys. Thanks for the support. Hope it helps. Oh, you want me to keep going here? I'll keep fucking going. Okay, so uh, let's do a talk about, a bit about bar maintenance, okay? So you can see, I've, look at the bar. On the, on the, look at the bright colors on the end. You can see there where I've heated up too much or broke it or stuff. From, okay, so look there. It's uneven, right? So me and Pete filed it down. Thanks, Pete. So um, bar maintenance, feel the tip. If there's a little bump there, like a fucking, uh, pardon my language, like a burl, a uh, little burl thing, get a file and file that off. That's why I want you to watch Chris's video, um, Chris Garage. He has a video up about maintenance. So I'll leave a link to that video. It's very important that you watch that video, okay? Because I don't want to keep on going over this stuff and, Keep inside of there, like scrape inside of there out. And um, a real professional chainsaw carver, I'm going to talk about that video in the next day or so and suggest it on YouTube. A real Steve Kanzora uh, suggested the video to me. And he said, 
If you scrape inside, I don't have anything in, thing thin enough in here. If you scrape inside there and black stuff comes out, well, you're not doing enough maintenance on your bars because it's not letting your bar, it's not letting the oil travel good enough down because you got to think the oil travels inside this channel down to the tip of the bar. So you need to keep these bar, carving bars clean on the inside, right down at the bottom and inside that channel, okay, where it's black. And if you if it's black when you clean it, you're not friggin' clean enough. Start cleaning your goddamn bars more, Jordy. Okay, bye.